Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Okay, this time you are going to cover the next topic. Uh, basically, this is the application of uh, microwave transmission line using passive uh, devices, which is the power divider. Okay, so as it names the power divider, it will divide power. Okay, the power when the power must be split among multiple transistors in an amplifier, the amplifier, the antennas, or uh, any other scenario. So the power divider is uh, the solution. Okay, or uh, the the suitable uh, devices to be used. So the power divider splits an input signal into two or more outputs that usually but not always equal in amplitude and phase. And a good power divider have the greatest port to port isolation. Isolation meaning that uh, one port will not disturb the other port. Okay, for example, if the transmission is from port 1 to port 2, so there will be no uh, signal traveling from port 2 to port 3. And, and a good power divider is also having lowest insertion loss and voltage standing wave ratio. VSW low, uh, lower insertion loss and also VSWR and least amplitude and phase imbalance over the entire frequency range of the of the device right so the right hand figure uh, shows how the a simple power divider looks like uh, for example this is two port uh, three port networks so the first port is the input port and the port 2 and port 3 is the uh, are the output port so input signal is divided into two or more output signals of lesser power okay so you, for example the input power is p1 or p in so it will divide equally to port 2 and also port 3 okay so sometimes they uh, could be uh, imbalanced power divisions uh, in which port one, uh, port two may be uh, given higher power if compared to the uh, port three, depending on the system requirement. Okay, in uh, in uh, in normal practice, so P two and P three will be having uh, equal power division, which is usually half of the input uh, power. Okay. Uh, this is also known as 3D power, 3 dB power divider, in which uh, half of the power is delivered to the uh, output port. And the other term is the power combiner. So, when two or more input signals combines at the output port. Okay, so you have separate input uh, signal at port one and port two, and this two signals will be combined and transmitted via a single transmission line okay so uh, in between these two ports there are um, resistor okay uh, which in, uh, be included to uh, improve the isolation to make sure that there's no signal traveling in between the adjacent ports okay these are uh, three main um, types of power divider the first one is the simplest one the t-junction right so this is the simplest type of power divider in the shape of t representing three transmission lines connected at a single point right three transmission line one two and three connected at one point and this uh, power divider will divide the supplied input signal into two outputs that are equal in amplitude and phase okay uh, but sometimes the power may not be uh, divided equally into port 2 and port 3 depending on the ratio or the requirement of the system 
right the second one is the resistive power divider it's more or less the same as the T junction but it is an improved version of the T junction power divider in which there are three resistors okay one two and three being included uh, at each transmission line in order to improve uh, the isolation okay so it's simple the design is simple but lossy due to the um, inclusion of the uh, resistors okay because the resist there's usually power loss uh, across the resistors as the resistors absorb power so this will provide to higher insertion loss as well and uh, one of the disadvantage disadvantages of resistive power divider uh, there's no port to port isolation okay port to port isolation is uh, not good for resistive power divider and to improve further there's uh, an upgraded version of the T junction power divider uh, which is called Wilkinson power divider in which is it consists of two quarter wavelength transmission line with a load resistor to provide isolation okay it must be lambda over four quarter wavelength of transmission line with load resistor to provide isolation it's here inherently match and reciprocal you can remember the meaning of reciprocal when the metric s is equivalent to its transpose what is transpose so when the uh, the first row become the first column and the second row become the second column and etc and and we if you compare the transfer version to the uh, original uh, S matrix so it will be similar okay but the uh, one of the disadvantages of Wilkinson power divider is it is not lossless okay that's lossy due to uh, the uh, additional uh, element included into the, the design and uh, one of the advantages of Wilkinson power divider it can be configured as n way Okay, more than two port can be included in the design. Okay, let's look at the first one, the simplest power divider design, which is the T junction. So, um, so it is a three port network. So you have the matrix will involve from S11 up to ST3. So if all the three ports are matched, so there's zero reflection at port 1, port 2 and port 3 therefore S11, S22 and S23 will be equal to 0 okay if each of these are matched in which the ZL is equal to Z0 the characteristic impedance for each line okay for example port 2 you have one transmission transmission line and port 1 you have the characteristic impedance equal to Z0 for example port 2 you have uh, Z1 here you have Z3 so if the Z load at each port um, match to the impedance of individual transmission line then the system is match okay, normally a power divider or combiner is a reciprocal network device okay if it is reciprocal so forward and reverse transmission line are the same so S11 will be equal to S21 S13 equal to S31 and S23 will be equal to S32 okay um, okay so if the uh, system the T junction network is match and reciprocal therefore the S metric okay this metric can be further reduced to this since it is matched so s11 equal to s22 equal to s23 equal to 0 and then s12 equal to s21 okay since it is reciprocal okay next is the lossless uh, power divider 
All right. So in general, uh, this tangent can provide an unequal power division, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the power may be divided equally to port 2 and port 3. However, it can also be used for unequal power division between the output ports. All right. And if you look at the, this is the input port, port 1. Okay, so when there's a discontinuity, okay, uh, on the transmission line, so it will uh, induce or introduce fringing fields at the edge of the uh, this uh, uh, discontinuity structure, and then this will lead to stored energy, and it can be estimated by lump susceptance given by J B. Okay, so in order to for this divider to match to the input line, so the total impedance or the emittance must be equal to 1 over Z1 plus 1 over Z2 plus the susceptance must be equal to 1 over Z0. Or if Z1, Z2 plus the susceptance must be equal to the intrinsic impedance or the characteristic impedance of the uh, transmission line. Okay, for tra lossy transmission line, okay, it is not lossless, so the JB will be included in the calculation. But for lossless transmission transmission line, it is assumed that the substance value JB equal to zero. Therefore, uh, the total emittance will be equal to. 1 over Z0. However, in practice, uh, the B is not negligible okay, due to this continuity and the stored energy on the susceptible uh, components. Okay, so uh, we need to use the uh, matching network okay, in order to cancel the susceptance. But this one uh, can be a block, uh, is practical for narrow frequency range. Okay, let's look, uh, look at an example a lossless T junction. Okay, lossless, so we can assume that the uh, JB equal to zero. All right, power divider has a source impedance of 50 ohm, so source of 50 ohm. So we can assume that Z0 for the input transmission line is 50 ohm. And then the question asks you to find Z1 and Z2 so that the input power is divided in a ratio of 1 to 2. Okay, meaning that this power divider uh, doesn't provide equal power division to port 1 and port 2. Okay, so this is the input port. And the output port is port 1 and port 2. Okay, so in order to get the Z1 and Z2, we only know the input uh, impedance at the input line Z0 equal to 50 ohm. So we need to consider the, uh, the information that we have in terms of the power division. Alright, so the total power given P in we know that the uh, power divider will divide the power to the output port, port 1 and port 2. However, the port 1 and port 2 being given uh, the total power with the ratio of 1 to 2. Okay, So one part will be given to port 1 and the other two parts will be given to port 2. So in other words, port 1 will be receiving one third of the power from P in, while port 2 will be given two thirds of the power, the input power, from the input power. Okay, once you have this uh, equation, so you know that the power to calculate power, P in for example, it is equal to V naught over 2, the RMS divided by Z naught. Right, so V naught is the voltage across the port 1 transmission line. Alright, so same goes to port 2 and
pot 3 so p1 sorry this is p in so p1 is up here and p2 is there so in which p1 will be uh, depending on z1 and p2 will be depending on uh, z2 okay once you have the p1 uh, the equation for p in p1 and p2 so you know that the relation between p1 and p2 as well to the p in so then you can compare them so you know p1 equal to v naught over 2 uh, set 2 squared so this is uh, v rms for port 1 so port 1 this is the supply voltage to port 1 so v naught over set 2 squared over its impedance z1 which is equal to one third for P1. Port 1 receive one third from P in. So one third, one over three of P in. So P in equal to P naught over Z2 squared over Z naught. Therefore, your Z, so from here you can get, you can cancel out P naught and then you can cancel this one. So you get Z1 equal to three Z naught. In which Z naught is equal to 50 so z1 equal to 150 ohm so same goes to uh, p2 receive two third from p in so this is p2 equation which is equal to th two third of p in so you can simplify the equation okay so P2 equal to 3 Z0 over 2, which is equal to 75 ohm. Okay, usually when the uh, power is delivered equally to uh, the first part and the second part, so usually the impedance will be the same. For example, Z1 150, Z2 will be also to equal to uh, 150. Okay, but if it is not equally divided so you will see that the impedance will be uh, in different values okay next the question asks you on um, to determine the reflection coefficient um, for each port okay so let's begin for port 1 so for port 1 so to get the reflection coefficient here so you'll see looking in from port 1 so looking from port 1 what you will see here what will be the z load it's basically so z naught here is 50 ohm okay what you will see at this point <coughs> you'll see that z1 is in parallel to z2 in which 150 in parallel to 75 so from here this is your sec l okay so reflection coefficient equal to sec l minus sec naught divided by sec l plus sec naught as usual okay so from there you can get 150 in parallel to 75 ohm equal to 50 so your sec l equal to this is port 1 gamma 1 so z l1 50 ohm is the line impedance right so get the reflection coefficient so z l from the calculation equal to 50 ohm so you get the gamma 1 or reflection coefficient at port 1 equal to 0 in which we can say that the port 1 or the transmission line 1 is in match condition okay let's look at the port 2 the view from port 2 so from port 2 is there okay from port 2 so you'll see this gamma 2 so the line impedance for port 2 is z1 equal to 150 ohm 
So what will be the ZL at this point is Z not in parallel to Z2. Okay, 50 in parallel to 75. So to get the gamma 2, okay, the ZL minus the Z1, the line impedance, divided by ZL plus Z1. So ZL in which 50, in this case 50 in parallel to Z2 is 75. So you get 30 ohm. So then calculate your uh, gamma 2 or reflection coefficient at port 2. It is equal to 2 over 3. Okay, so it is not match. Okay, if it is match, so uh, the uh, ZL, the load impedance at this point must be equal to 150 ohm. The individual transmission line. Okay, the uh, internal or characteristic impedance of that particular line. Alright, next for port 3. Okay, let's look at port 3. Okay, look at here. So from port 3, gamma 3, so what will be your ZL? So Z, the impedance equal to 75 ohm, the characteristic impedance of this line, of the third transmission line. So the ZL for this one, looking at this point, so will be Z1 in parallel to Z0. Okay, Z0 in parallel to Z1. So 50 in parallel to 150. Okay, so Z0 is 50. Z1 is 150. So you get 37.5. Then get your gamma 3 equal to minus 1.3. Again, it is not match. Okay, to get the system match, so you have to make sure that the ZL from each port equivalent to individual characteristic impedance of the lines, right? So uh, then you can get the uh, match system. Okay, next in order to improve further uh, the T-junction, so because it is difficult to get uh, the three ports match simultaneously, so the resistive divider is introduced. Okay. Uh, okay. As mentioned here, the lossless, even the lossless T junction divider suffers from uh, this, the disadvantage of not being matched at all ports. Okay. So all ports cannot be matched simultaneously. So and it does not provide isolation between the output ports, and it's difficult to achieve um, perfect isolation between the output port as well. So therefore, the resistive power divider is uh, introduced in which the junction is loaded by three resistors with a value of Z0 over 3 each, where all lines have the characteristic impedance of Z0. Okay, now the system is matched. So all lines will be having the same characteristic impedance of Z0. Okay, by introducing three um, resistors for one resistor for each line so three resistors for the whole network so each of these resistors values of set not over three okay then the input impedance observed from the single transmission line and also when you refer to the um, at each port of the transmission line will be equal to Z0 over 3 plus 2Z0 over 3. For example, if you look at this point, Z1, okay, Z1 from here. So at this point, the Z lot load will be the Z L2, Z from port 2 in parallel to Z at port 3. So at this point, the Z load 
will be equal to the z from port 2 in parallel to z from port 3. Okay, so here is z0 over 3. So the z in will be equal to z0 over 3 plus the z l. Okay, so what is your z l? So z l from port 2 is this one plus z0. Okay, z0 over 3 plus z0. Same goes to port 3. It is z0 over 3 plus z0. Oops. So in which you can say at this point is the 4z0 over 3 in parallel. In which it is equal to 2z0 over 3. So that's why the z in here is equal to z0 over 3 plus 2z0 over 3. Which is equal to z0. So the system is matched. Alright, so the impedance Z at this point, as I mentioned, is equal to ZL here. So Z2 in parallel to Z3 equal to 4Z0 over 3. So the system is reciprocal. When you look at this point, Z2 for example, so it is Z0 over 3 plus Z over here. So in this case, the ZL from port 1 plus the ZL from port Three, which will be, uh, which which yield the same value because all parameters are having the same values. So the resistive power divider can be matched at all ports, but even though it is not lossless, isolation still a problem for a resistive power divider. However, it improve. Uh, the condition of T junction, which uh, all ports cannot be uh, cannot be matched simultaneously. Okay, we have seen that the impedance for each port uh, of resistive power divider are equal to Z naught, and uh, all ports or all transmission line are in match condition. So let's look at how much power is delivered. Uh, from the input point to the port, the output port one and port two. Okay, so so the P in. Uh, so we know that we assume that the V at this point at this junction is V. So the input voltage is V one. So V at this junction is equal to. You can use power divider. So here is your Z L. So Z L equal to your Z from uh, port 1 in parallel to port 2, uh, Z2. Okay, so it's equal to 2 Z0 over 3. Alright, so in this case, V across this junction equal to V1 multiply with the ZL divided by the total impedance. So you get v equal to 2 over 3 v1 okay if you look at the input okay the input the total power in is 100 percent supposedly however the one delivered at this point is only two thirds of v1 so v1 is the total uh, voltage at the input point so the total received at this point is only two third it is not three over three it's only two third meaning that one third of the power is uh, there's losses okay it means um, there's attenuation of the power across the resistor okay now let's look at what happened to the power delivered to the output port Okay, so what will be the power received at port 2 and port 3? So now the input at this junction is V. So this part can be simplified by this. So here is your Z0. 
and here is z0 over 3 okay so what will be your uh, v2 across here okay so the supply voltage is v so again you can use the power divider v2 equal to v multiplied with z not in this case at port 2 divided by the total impedance okay so what is v so v from the earlier calculation equal to 2 over 3 v1 okay therefore the v2 v2 is equal to half v1 okay so from 2 third at this point Okay, and V1 supposedly 100% and then another half being delivered to port 2 and it same goes to port 3. Okay, because both having the same total impedance. Okay, so that the power is divided equally to both port 2 and port 3. And so here you know that the power uh, at the output port S12, S2, uh, S21 is equal to 0 0.5 or 1 over 2. So the S metric can be uh, listed as, so this is S11. So the system is matched. So S11 equal to S22 equal to S33 equal to 0. And S12 equal to S21 equal to 1 over 2. Okay. Uh, because the system is, is reciprocal. So the, uh, the metric can be further simplified to this. Okay, let's look at uh, in terms of the power delivered. Okay, so the, the power input at the input point supposedly P equal to V, uh, in this case V1 squared, sorry, V1 over 2 RMS divided by the impedance of the lines all right so so we can call this as p in or p1 so what happened to p2 and p3 so p2 and p3 receive half of v1 okay half of v1 so how much power is received is only one quarter of the power being delivered to port 2 and port 3 so another so the total loss at port 2 and port 3 equal to half okay so half power only half of the power supply and half of it being dispatched or lost by um, through the resistors right so the system require higher input power to uh, ensure that higher power can be delivered to the output due to the losses within the resistor itself. Alright, so we have seen that that's shortcoming or there's disadvantages of the uh, T-junction and also resistive power divider. So for lossless to a divider, first for T-junction, it cannot be matched simultaneously. If we use the resistive power divider, uh, it can provide matching, good matching for all parts. However, it provides a uh, poor isolation and also significant, significant power loss within the transmission line itself. Right, therefore, to improve further, there's uh, an improved version of the power divider uh, introduced into the uh, system which is known as Wilkinson Power Divider. Okay, so I'll discuss this in the next lecture. Alright, so before we end, so let's have a quick individual quiz too. So you need to complete this and submit it via the e-learning by 1st of January 2023. Um, okay, so it's more or less the same as the first example. Just you need to determine the return loss for all ports given that, that Z1 equal to Z2 equal to 50 ohm and you need to calculate the output power at port 2 and port 3 if uh, the input power at port 1 or the input power given is 2 watt. So with that, 
Thank you.